Good Morning Tennessee from WATE 6 in your side starts now. Coming up on Good Morning Tennessee, a local animal shelter closed today for cleanup, but there are still some hurdles in the way. Why several dogs will soon be put down if the community does not step in. That's coming up. Plus, parents furious to find a school's field house has been vandalized. Why deputies are having some trouble pinning down the people responsible coming up. And hundreds of bikers passing through Knoxville today on their ride to the nation's capital. We are live with what you can expect for today's Run for the Wall. That's straight ahead. Good Morning Tennessee starts right now. Good morning, Tennessee. I'm Teresa Smith. And I'm Bo Williams. Great to see you this morning. Today's big story is coming up. All right, well, got to get you out the door this morning. Grab your umbrellas, at least to start your day. Hopefully, yeah. we can lose them by midday. Throw them in the back seat by the end of the day. Yeah, I think we should have a good opportunity for that. I mean, bike riders, anything like motorcyclists, yeah. anything like that. The later hours of the day, much nicer than the morning hours. A little foggy, a little wet, a little damp as you head out the door this morning. There are some sprinkles, more or less just a whole lot of moisture in the air. So, fog is going to be an issue as you head out the door. A few wet spots, but I don't think it's going to be an overly wet day just for the morning hours. Humidity is up there, that's for sure. Temperature right now in the upper 60s, so we are mild. We are muggy, that is for sure. We're back into the low 80s today. I do believe it's going to be a warm one, and it's still on the humid side at times just because we've had so much rain yesterday. Good over at least an inch in a lot of spots, so all that's going to start to you know evaporate a little bit. So our air is still going to hold on to some of that moisture, but Here's this cold front, much drier, much more comfortable air back there settling into East Tennessee. So tomorrow is going to be an outstanding day. Before we talk about tomorrow, though, we've got to get you out the door this morning. Maybe a passing sprinkle. A lot of that's not even actually raindrops. It's just a lot of moisture in the air. That's kind of how the morning is going to roll on. Foggy, kind of wet, a few showers drying out though through the day today, and I think we stay dry for the next uh, seven days in a lot of spots. A couple little speed bumps, but I think we're mainly dry through Memorial Day. All right, thank you, Trent. Let's get you updated on what's happening traffic wise right now around the area. Live look for you right now. This is T dot uh, the camera at I 40 at Cedar Bluff. Do have a vehicle on the shoulder of the roadway, but traffic so light right now, east and westbound not going to cause any problems. Now we have been telling you about a crash in Campbell County. We have some new details for you. It is a deadly crash. The right lane still blocked 75 uh, southbound right there around mile marker 147. It's expected to be opened in about the next hour. Originally they were hoping to have it open around five this morning. Now it's been pushed back to almost seven o'clock. We'll continue to watch it. Keep you up to date. Other than that, we're seeing no other problems at this time. Let's look at your forecast and traffic together. Time now to 601. Tennessee Secretary of State will be in Knoxville today to announce a major consumer fraud case. Trey Hargett's office is saying that and little else in an announcement yesterday. Here's what we know. Hargett will be joined by the Tennessee Associate Attorney General along with members of the Knox County Legislative Delegation. We are told this will involve an unprecedented multi-state action against sham nonprofits with strong roots here in East Tennessee. We'll be at that announcement and bring you the latest information straight to our WATE 6 on your side app. Starting today, the Campbell County Animal Shelter will be closed for up to two weeks to prevent another outbreak of the deadly parvo virus. We've been following this story closely since last week when Mayor E.L. Morton first proposed temporarily shutting down the shelter and appointing a new director. Last night, the county commission approved both of his requests, voting unanimously to appoint Mez Bruce as the new director. There are still some immediate challenges that need to be dealt with. At last check, there were still 12 dogs at the shelter, and we're told they'll need to be removed before workers can begin cleaning or else they'll have to be put down. If we can't find people to take them and people to foster them, they will unfortunately be euthanized. If you would like to adopt or foster one of the remaining dogs at the animal shelter, we're going to have that information for you online. Just check the As Seen on WATE section. A Knox County couple is expected to go to trial today on dozens of child abuse charges. We've been following this case since 2013 when Jessica Cox and her husband Michael McIntosh were indicted on a combined 46 counts of child abuse and aggravated child abuse. Now Cox is accused of handcuffing her two stepsons to a cabinet, beating them and burning them with cigarettes. McIntosh was arrested after making statements in court, admitting he had handcuffed the boys as punishment. We will let you know what happens in court. Concerns of more violence this morning in Waco, Texas, after Sunday's deadly biker gang shootout. We first told you yesterday on GMT, rival motorcycle gangs getting into a fight at a restaurant, leaving nine people dead and 18 others hurt. WAT six on your side reporter Shelby Miller joining us now with new details as police prepare for threats of more violence. Shelby. 
Teresa Bo, the Waco Police Department says they're preparing for the worst. They're worried the biker gangs will try to retaliate against one another and law enforcement following Sunday's deadly shootout at a Texas restaurant. That's where bikers broke out brass knuckles, knives, chains, clubs and guns. The violence killed nine people and hurt 18 others. Police say about 170 people were arrested. Some could be charged with capital murder. In my nearly 35 years of law enforcement experience, this is the most violent and most gruesome scene that I have dealt with. This comes as we're now learning state police have been warned trouble could be brewing before Sunday's deadly shootout. A bulletin was ish issued earlier this month saying there was a dispute over the gangs refusing to pay dues and for wearing Texas patches on their vests without approval. We'll keep following this story for you and let you know what happens. Tears of All right. Thank you, Shelby. Yeah, we'll continue to follow this story, keep you up to date, but st tension's still pretty high there yeah. in Waco. Nine people dead, and they're yeah. still bracing for we any... Will possibly it, more violence. Right. Yeah. Time right now is 6.05 and other news this morning. The Sevier County Sheriff's Office wants to know who spray-painted vulgar phrases and profanity on a school's field house. This happened at Northview Intermediate School in Kodak. We had to blur some of the words because they were so vulgar. Deputies believe the vandalism happened sometime between Friday and yesterday. So far, they are not sure who's responsible because there isn't any direct surveillance footage from the area. One thing that is for sure, the people who send their children and grandchildren to the school are not very happy about it. Who would do that? You know, who would want these younger children to read that? You know, it's it's bad. It's bad language. If you know anything about this, you are urged to uh, call the Sevier County Sheriff's Office at 865-428-1899. Hundreds of motorcycle riders traveling across the country right now for a good cause. That's right. It's to honor veterans as part of the annual Run for the Wall. WATE 6 on your side reporter Kayla Strayer is live from World's Fair Park where they'll be stopping by later this morning. Good morning, Tirsa Bo. They are going to be here around 1115 this morning. About 300 bikers are going to be stopping at World's Fair Park to eat lunch and laying a wreath here at the Veterans Memorial. Now, this is the 27th annual Run for the Wall. They start in California. They are on their way to Washington, D.C. Now, they're raising awareness and support for veterans. Along the way, people cheer them on from overpasses and the different towns that they stop in. Their final destination is the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in D.C. They will be there this Memorial Day weekend. And another group of about 300 bikers will be coming to our area tomorrow. They are stopping at exit 3669 along Interstate 40. And Bo and Tirsa, we have all of those details on our website about how you can support them and where their exact stops will be, WATE.com. Bo, Tirsa. All right, thank you, Kayla Strayer, downtown for us this morning. Time now, 6.07. All right, let's get you up to speed on the forecast as you get ready to start your day. It is Tuesday. We've already gotten through one day with a little bit of rain there yeah. in the late day. Can we get through another day and maybe escape some of that? Yeah, maybe. Well, of course, some of us still, you know, grass likes it. Oh, that's so true. I don't so like true. driving in it for that's the morning so drive, true. but, you know, the right. lawns definitely need it, the flowers and whatnot. I like so. my grass morning. yellow. Do you it's like been, it? It's yeah. been kind of neat. Well, kind of different. You never have to mow it. Yeah. I mean, it still, it still looks nicer, <laughs> green and mowed. Bowen, tomato, so. tomato. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Anyway, we're looking at a little bit of fog this morning. A morning like this where it's just so wet, there's a lot of dew on the grass, there's you know, a good inch or so of rain yesterday. The air is still wet. It's still going to do a lot of good for our grass and things like that. As far as rain is concerned, though, there's not a whole lot of rain in the forecast for the day today. Just a couple showers. Fog will slow you down this morning. It's pretty widespread. It's just not the thickest fog. You've got about a mile visibility a lot of these places right here you see in six seven nine ten and seven but across the plateau you got about a mile or less just because it's saying six seven nine and ten doesn't necessarily mean there's no fog in that spot it just means right at that observation station that reporting station not seeing thick fog but there is going to be some thick fog in some of those valleys temperature wise we're in the 60s we've got a couple sprinkles out there again most of this isn't even really rain it's just a whole lot of moisture in the air. I do think we're going to have a foggy start to the day, but there's some cooler air. You can kind of see a line right there. You see that some clouds. That's the cold front that slides through. Then we see some sunshine. So increasing sun through the day today. A little bit of wet spots uh, this morning. A little bit of fog as well. So add some extra time, but we're drying out by midday and your drive home much brighter. Talk about tomorrow's brightness and warmth coming up again.
All right, thank you, Trent. Starbucks might have done away with CDs, but it's definitely staying in the music business. Hmm, how you'll soon have a say in what's playing while you wait for your coffee. That's coming up. Plus, the State Department announcing a timeline for when it plans to release Hillary Clinton's emails. When we can expect those thousands of documents to go public, that's next. You're watching Good Morning Tennessee from WATE 6 on your side. back everyone new this morning want some uh, information concerning the State Department and what they're saying will happen uh, as far as Hillary Clinton and those emails. That's right they're saying that they're going to go public with those emails that were exchanged while she was Secretary of State. Now those emails have been a focus of controversy since it was revealed Clinton used a private server to conduct State Department business. The State Department says it will release those emails on or after January 15th of next year. New questions being raised this morning about the safety of MV-22 Ospreys, the aircraft that crashed Sunday, killing one Marine and injuring 21 others in Hawaii. The plane's hard landing was caught on video. The Osprey is an aviation hybrid, part helicopter and part airplane, but it does come with a troubled history. During early test flights, a series of Osprey crashes killed 30 people, earning it a nickname, the Widowmaker. But the Marine Corps says the modern Osprey is reliable and safe. We're told there will be no change to Osprey flights while they investigate why this one went down. Well, we are continuing to give you more for your money this morning as our retirement series continues. Yeah, what well, you need to know to stay ahead coming up in a live report. Plus, we are learning more about how a seven year old ended up being dragged for several feet by a school bus. What police are telling us about the driver this morning. That's next. You're watching Good Morning Tennessee from WATE 6 on your side. Welcome back to 615. Police in Kentucky are now saying that driver inattention led to an accident where a little girl was dragged by a school bus. We first brought you the story over the weekend. It happened Friday afternoon when the seven year old was being dropped off in her backpack, got stuck in the door. You see her there. A neighbor security camera is what recorded all of this. Officers say she was dragged for about 500 feet before the bus driver noticed. It was amazing. I mean, I like I couldn't believe it. I mean, her bouncing around in that door all the way down the street. It was bad. First grader suffered severe road rash and spent the weekend at the hospital. We're told she is now recovering at home. The bus driver, by the way, has been suspended without pay pending the outcome of the investigation. We're going to let you know, though, what happens. What? Uh, that's just rough video to watch that, it little, is, girl. that little girl. 500 yards. That we said 500 feet, something like that. Wow, but right. kudos. There was someone in a, in a red Camaro that saw what was going on and was actually able to pull in front of the bus. Okay. And, and alert the driver, you know, basically stop the bus. So right. time right now to 616 as you get your kids ready to go off to school yeah. this morning. Let's talk a little bit about our forecast. Should be fine at the bus stops this morning. Yeah, Quick, fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, there's always, the, I guess, maybe a chance of a spotty shower early trend, but by and large, today shouldn't be a bad day. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a bad day today by any means. You're looking outside right here. It is a little bit on the foggy side, a little wet as well, but most of us are going to be drying out as you go through the day today. Not not 100% dry yet, but we'll get there, especially across the plateau in Crossville. It is foggy this morning, but we've got a ton of sunshine expected for the plateau once you get into the afternoon. This morning, on the foggy side. Here we go. Let's take a look at it. 66 degrees right now. Temperature is definitely mild. It's definitely muggy as well, but we're getting back into those lower 80s. So temperatures are going to soar today, but we've got to talk about this morning rain right now. Just a couple of sprinkles, maybe in spots. Again, a lot of this isn't really hitting the ground. Maybe a couple other sprinkles making their way up into Cumberland County, but it's just such a wet start to the day. And I'm talking about not because of rain, just Fog, dew, moisture all over the place. We had an inch of rain at least in a lot of spots yesterday, so the ground is soaked. The roads are pretty wet in a lot of spots, so add a little bit of extra time to that morning drive. The good news is I do think we're mainly done with at least, uh, you know, widespread rain. A couple sprinkles here and there possible the rest of the morning. Maybe once you get into the afternoon, we'll see a couple showers across the Smokies. The farther east you are, the better shot you have at that. But we've got a cold front on its way, so I bet we get some sunshine, a ton of sunshine in our western counties across the plateau and that can help. I can help out a lot. We're in the 60s right now. We're on our way today with that increasing sunshine and decreasing cloud cover on our way to about 80, maybe 82 or 83 degrees today. A couple morning showers, but drying out tomorrow. Gorgeous. It's going to be a 
comfortable morning back into the 50s. Humidity is going to be low. It's not going to be as muggy, not going to be as mild. Pretty refreshing start to your Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon, yes, low 80s, but the humidity is not going to be a major factor. So you're going to do any outdoor, outdoor mowing or anything you want to do. Fire up the grill, getting ready for Memorial Day. Maybe testing out some new recipes Wednesday afternoon. Evening should be gorgeous. A couple showers possible Thursday, but I think it's, it's just a couple isolated sprinkles, mainly dry. Friday's gorgeous, mid 70s, and then we warm it up. As we head into that Memorial Day weekend, look at these temperatures soaring. Some spots near 90 Monday, but I can't rule out an isolated storm either day. Though I think most of our outdoor plans, though, here. are going to be just fine. No major issues as you head throughout your, uh, at least your travel weekend. Memorial Day should be, should be okay for the most part. You say it's okay for outdoor mowing? Out Wednesday, mow. Will that be a difference between like indoor mowing? We call that vacuuming. Yeah, we call that vacuuming or sweeping. <laughs> did I just say that? You did. I don't know how you take care of your house. <laughs> Anyhow, all right. Did. Change, change gears here for a moment. We got to get you up to date on a serious situation. Uh, interstate in, at 75 southbound right now of an accident in Campbell County near mile marker 147. We understand there has been a death reported. It is southbound 75. Again, this is mile marker 147. You want to be careful through there. Right lane is closed. It's going to be slow going until they get that cleaned up. Right now, TDOT saying it may not be till the top of the hour until they get that done. So we're talking about another 45 minutes or so. But again, that's southbound 75, mile marker 147, Campbell County. Be careful through there. All right, let's get you up to date on what's happening in some other areas right now. Take a look. TDOT Smartway camera near downtown. 40 at Hall of Fame, east and westbound traffic moving along just fine at this time. Travel times look good as well. Clear across the board as far as Knoxville is concerned. So you should make some pretty good time. We'll keep you up to date on that incident in Campbell County, let you know when it clears. That's a look at your forecast and your traffic together. In today's Tech Bytes, Samsung is taking on Apple Pay with a new mobile payment system. Samsung Pay will launch this summer and will be available everywhere credit cards are accepted. The company's previous system, Google Wallet, will be phased out. And Starbucks entering a new partnership with Spotify to let customers have a say in the music that's played in Starbucks stores. Once you have your coffee, you'll even be able to control and continue listening to the store's playlist through the Starbucks or Spotify apps. And finally here, President Obama is celebrating a major tech milestone. What is it? Well, the commander in chief finally got his own Twitter account. His first message from at POTUS reads, hello, Twitter, it's Barack. Really, six years in, they're finally giving me my own account. First Lady Michelle Obama sent him a tweet saying it's about time. She could have told them that behind the scenes too, probably. I'm just excited he finally got one. All right, follow us, Mr. President. <laughs> Those are your tech bites. Well, getting ahead can be easier said than done. Coming up, our financial planner joins us to talk about what you'll need to have taken care of before you hit retirement age when Good Morning Tennessee returns. Stay with us. New Flonase Allergy Relief Nasal Spray. This changes everything. Flonase is the 24-hour relief that outperforms a leading allergy pill. When we breathe in allergens, our bodies react by overproducing six key inflammatory substances that cause our symptoms. Most allergy pills only control one substance. Flonase controls six, and six is greater than one. So go ahead, inhale life, excite your senses, seize the day and the night. New Flonase, six is greater than one. This changes everything. Craft Natural Shreds, not made with just any milk. We start with fresh milk, carefully selected from only U.S. dairy farms. Because to make something amazing, you gotta start with something amazing. Craft Natural Cheese. Welcome back everyone. Our retirement series coming to a close this morning as we look over the best ways to plan for your 60s. And joining us now as always, certified financial planner John Fawaz. And planning for your 60s, John, first step, what do we need to think about? Well, one of them is uh, often overlooked is social security maximization. Okay. Before you sign up, you really need to look at some options. There are some strategies out there that could increase the amount of money you could get, something like file and suspend spousal benefits. The other thing also is that first face a lot of people is that your social security benefits could be taxable. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason for that is that when you know you pay taxes all your life and now when you retire, you have to pay taxes again on it. So with good tax planning, you can avoid paying taxes on your social security benefits. So look at the 
the strategies and look at tax, uh, tax ways to s reduce your taxes. This is something else we've been talking about a lot while we've been looking at planning for your retirement, and that is health care planning, something maybe we don't think about a whole lot when we're younger, but obviously as we get older, something we have to take in consideration. Th that's correct, and, and really the, the best option generally to uh, supplement your Medicare coverage is to get a Medigap or Medicare supplement plan. Mm -hmm. The problem with those plans, as you get older, the rates tend to go up quite a bit and becomes very expensive. An alternative is to look into what we call Medicare Advantage plan. Now, again, it's managed care, so you won't have the bells and whistles that you would have with the Medicare supplement plans, uh, but you could end up saving a lot of money. The best resource I've seen out there is to go to Medicare.gov. You can put your zip code in there, put the medications you're on, and it will tell you what's the best product and insurance company for your money. Oh, that's interesting to know. Uh, retirement income plan, something else. Yeah, that's probably the most important step. Right. Is basically knowing where you draw in the money from what accounts. Right. The most popular is what we call the bucket rule, where you split your investments between three buckets. One is called short term, intermediate, and long term. And the idea here is to put equities or stocks in the long-term bucket. So when the market is doing well, what you do is take the gains and split it into lesser riskier investments. And if the market is not doing well, you don't touch it. And this way you avoid selling low. Okay. Finally, you have on here, beware of sharks. I know this, <laughs> <laughs> well, as you, as you get older, uh, what happens is you get invited to a lot of seminars right. at really nice restaurants like Fleming's, Ruth Chris, and to the sponsor to put one of those events will spend usually 10 to $15,000 on one seminar. And the only way they can break even, make their money back is to sell you a product where they lock you in for a very long time, typically like an index annuity, 15, 20 years. So really you need to be very cautious when you attend with, with those seminars. The, another great resource is before you work with any financial advisor, go to FINRA.org okay. and you can input your financial advisor's name in there and you can pull everything about them. If there's lawsuits, complaints, uh, designations, what, what the qualifications are, everything about them is right there in one place. It's good to do your research before you hand somebody some of your money. Exactly. John, appreciate it, man. Thank Hopefully you. this has helped you over the past month. We've been talking about getting you ready for your retirement. We'll have all that information for you on our website, WAT.com. You'll find it on the As Seen on WATE section. John, thanks again. Thank you. Thanks All for right. having me. Cheers. Lots of good information. All right, news of another Walmart possibly coming to Maribel has a lot of people upset this morning. Why they say this is the last thing their community needs coming up. Plus, it's still nearly 500 days away, and the balls are already talking about the battle at Bristol. What Coach Bush Jones had to say about the game, that's next. You're watching Good Morning Tennessee from WATE 6 on your side. Good morning, everyone. Well, the Big Orange Caravan has just one stop left. The caravan arriving in Bristol last night. Of course, that is where the balls will begin the 2016 season. Coach Jones and Coach Barnes signing autographs, meeting with the good fans up there in the Tri-Cities. Everybody happy to be a part of the caravan. Coach Jones also talking about that game against Virginia Tech coming up September 10th of 2016. I believe it's 480 days to kick off and just an opportunity for our student athletes to compete in this great, great venue, but also break the world record for fan attendance at a sporting event in terms of football. And uh, it's going to be an exciting moment, but in terms of our football program, we have a long ways to go until we get there. But it's always nice to come in here and look forward to the future. 480 days, but who is counting, right? I guess it would be 479 now. That is kickoff at Bristol. We're now 109 days away from kickoff in Nashville. That will be September 5th of this season. Nashville, the final stop on the Big Orange Caravan. That will be on Wednesday. What the segue that was. Well, it was a good weekend to be a Tennessee Vol. The Lady Vol softball team clinching a spot in the Super Regionals and the Tennessee baseball team sweeping Mississippi State, claiming a spot in the SEC tournament. It it was also a good day yesterday for Kristen Stewart, the SEC naming the Vols junior outfielder first team all SEC. It's the second year in a row he has gotten that nod this season. He hit 318 with 15 home runs. The Vols in Hoover, Alabama, they will play Arkansas later today in round one of the SEC tournament. And you know I will have your highlights tonight. That is your look at morning sports for Good Morning Tennessee. I'm Michael Spencer.